trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Are bestsellers all they're hyped up to be? The Terrible Book Club explores whether or not you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. If you've ever seen a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Thank you for joining us today in our holy place of worship. Please rise for our hymn by the good venerated prophet Maxwell B. of 24 on page 69 of your missalettes. Shoddy wanna fuck. Shoddy wanna fuck. Shoddy likes it rough. And she's got a big oily butt, a big round wet McMuffin. Shorty's got sexual techniques, and a big round oily butt, goosebumps on her booty cheeks. I wanna bust a nut. Whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Unfortunately, we come here today to speak of a blasphemer, a heretic amongst us, proclaiming himself the God of all creation and one who worships the sacred Calypgian. However, this man is nothing but a false prophet who seeks only to venerate himself and not the greatest of all creations, those big round butts that we all know and love. Oh, amen! Amen! Paris, it's Terrible Book Club. It's Terrible Book Club. Yeah, hello. Uh, hello and welcome to episode 105 of the Terrible Book Club. I'm, uh, I'm Paris, um, and this is Reverend Chris. Hello. This time, we read the heathen text, the Book of Adonatology, the Sacred Pentagon of the Adonatology Religion by King Adonis. Pretender. The pretender, the blasphemer, <laughs> King Adonis. Oh, man. All right. If this is your first time listening to the show, what we do here at the Terrible Book Club is we read books that we assume will be bad based on their cover, title, summary, or some combination of the three. Sometimes we also read things that are recommended to us by patrons or listeners. Uh, so we do the opposite of what most people do when they're in a bookstore or if they're browsing for an ebook online. And usually this experiment results in a disappointing read, although once in a while we do end up liking the book. Content warnings today include religious cults sex cults, homophobia, transphobia, old racial slurs, enslavement and torture, and asses, big asses. So Listen, if you're not into butt butts, talk today. if you're not into butts, please head out the fire exit at the back of the house. <laughs> like you just got to this whole book is Now's about chance. asses. It's it, we're, it's going to be nonstop butt talk here today on Terrible right. Butt Club. Terrible Butt Club. Yeah. So um this is the back of the book summary for the Book of Adonatology. One of the most influential books in the history of literature, recognized as one of the greatest literary masterpieces of its time, <laughs> the Book of Adonatology, the Sacred Pentagon, are the five sacred books of the Adonatology religion. It is the holy revelation of the true existence of Adonis the Heavenly Father and Issa Elohim, the Holy Spirit, the curvaceous Mother God. 
These holy revelations were given to our Lord and Savior King Adonis on the day of his enlightenment by the angel Elishamel on January 3rd, 1996. The Book of Adonatology is the supreme authority and living source of all Adonatology teaching, the sacred text that sets out the creed, rituals, ethics, and laws of Adonatology. Yet, despite the growing interest in Adonatology teachings and culture, there has never been a form of sacred literature written for the modern-day woman until now. The Book of Adonatology, the Sacred Pentadon of the Adonatology religion, is written in contemporary language that makes the text easy to understand to the reader. The revelations are accurate and completely free of error. Furthermore, the Book of Adonatology, the Sacred Pentadon of the Adonatology religion, includes beautiful black and white paintings of some of the book's most voluptuous female characters, as well as our Heavenly Father's first visitation by the angel Elishamel. The dictionary is arranged as definitions for easy reference. Oh. The introduction recalls the visitation the King Adonis received by the an angel Elishamel on that fateful day, as well as the Adonatology mantra. Of the Book of Adonatology, the Sacred Pentadon of the Adonatology religion itself, examines and considers issues relating to human evolution, creationism, the relationship between the triad and man, health and well-being, science and technology, prosperity, and the spiritual and sexual liberation of women with curves, all in compassionate and brilliant fashion. What the fuck did I just read? <laughs> we got we got some real wacky shit today here, guys. Son of a bitch! I hate this so much. Somehow I had never read the summary. This is absolute fucking insanity. <laughs> I found it's this really... one out in the wild, Paris, just uh, yeah, out on the internet. All right, let's talk about how Chris found this and how we came to uh, to read this for the show. I saw a meme on Instagram that defined adonatology as the worship of women with big butts. And I was like, hey, I can get behind that, maybe. Let's check this <laughs> out. You can get behind it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. okay. Funny. Um, anyway, um, so I, I, wanted, I was like, whoa, what's this about? And then when I Googled it, I found this website and I found this $40 book. For it, it was fifty, but it went down to forty Paris, yep. as we were considering it. Uh, um, and I was like, "Oh, we have to dive into this shit because let me tell you, if once you look at the website, it it just screams religious pyramid scheme." Yeah, it's uh, please, please, listeners, do yourself a favor and go to adonatology.com and just look around. Uh, just just look around. It barely works. <laughs> it's got way too much shit on it. And of course, it doesn't mention any of the negative tenets of the religion. It only mentions the like, you know, flowery um, top layer before you really get into the shit below the top layer of soil there. Um, it's also, I mean, I looked at the testimonials and was like, okay, all the women have been paid. It's and very the obvious, two, like, yeah. models from various parts of the world holding up a sign that says Adonatology and saying, yes, I am Adonatologist. Thank you. The end. <laughs> yeah. And the two men, I was like, oh, those are just free photos on the Internet. Those aren't real people. So I just reverse image searched them and I was correct. Um, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Pa Paris, sure could you, the testimonials under the dude pictures, too are some of the fakest shit I've ever seen where it's yeah. just like, yes, this solved all my problems. It solved all my questions about science and religion and creation. Thanks, Adonatology. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I, I mean, why would anyone e even... So anyway, the pictures are suspect. They're obvious, like, um, from Unsplash or Pix Pixel or Petzl or something. They're from photo galleries. And if you reverse image search them, they come up in other various ads you know for other stuff or in articles so unless those very models are adonatologists <laughs> which i doubt very um, much doubt i mean so you have fake testimonials or and paid testimonials which i understand that a lot of people selling products will pay for testimonials but even then people will still use the product and then give a review of it i know i know a lot of them are bullshit like i know a lot of them are just snake oil but for a religion it's you shouldn't really be paying people to say your religion's good. That's like extra bad. Usually with religions, there's enough people who are into it to give a 
honest testimony, at least honest for well, themselves. Well, apparently, testimonial. odontology is growing ever more popular, and it's one of the most influential texts ever written, Paris. Yeah, I mean, just insanely false statements. I mean, this book is clearly not one of the most influential books in the history of literature. It's not recognized as a literary masterpiece of its time. I mean, to, to open your summary like that with very obvious lies is just not a good strategy. And, okay, so, like, the top layer of the scam here is just, like, let's just talk about the book itself as yeah, a printed about, object. Yes, yes. As a, as a, as a, about it. $40 we had oh. to pay for this. We had, thank you, patrons, for funding this, Thank by you, the patrons. Way. We would not have been able to afford this. I mean, you, I, you can't, obviously, this is an audio medium. You can't see the size of the, it is about 160 pages, not printed small or anything. It's not like they're cramming a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's generous. I mean, five illustrations in the back of mediocre quality that th there there's nothing in here that justifies forty dollars. No, not size, I mean, not content, mm -hmm. not art quality. No, I have a I have a friend who's a new author, and he also has his books uh, printed on demand from Amazon. You know, I guess that's that's a thing. You know, so you don't print advanced copies if you're a smaller author because you don't know if you can sell them so you sell them for a slightly higher price and then they're printed on demand and my friend's debut sort of like young adult fantasy novels not 9.99 or something so i mean and that's a book with effort put into it and a story and it was like 300 and something pages so to have someone offer their like <coughs> They're like Twitter screed on an ass religion <laughs> as a $40 book. It, it just, re it's just, it, I mean, it wasn't edited. It wasn't, or it wasn't edited well. There's a bunch of weird, awkward sentences, weird word choices. Um, <clears throat> there's a word that keeps coming up in the text that Chris, will talk, Chris and I will talk about in a few minutes. So like structurally and technically, it's a terrible, it's not good. It is a terrible work. Just um, one layer of the scammery happening here. On the Odontology website, you can get a year or monthly membership that for like $23 a month or $250 a year, you get access to certain video seminars or like a card or something. But there's no indication of what that might even look like on the website. You just have to kind of bet that you can become a card carrying member of a Donatology and you'll get something for it. Every last thing about this, even in the book, this dude is talking about how wealth will come to you if yeah. you worship King Adonis, which is classic pyramid scheme shit here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's, I mean, I'm surprised he wasn't like, send $1 to King Adonis, P.O. Box, <laughs> 6969. <laughs> Miami, Florida, or LA, sorry. And listen, um, Paris, at, at the start of this, there was a part of me that, okay. Let, I know, you wanted to believe in the butt deity. Well, I, I mean, I okay, let's get a thing out of the way. Um, I like a nice butt. <laughs> you know this about me. <laughs> yes, I have met your girlfriend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and, and so part of me was like, oh, maybe this is about body positivity for yeah, women in a way that might mm -hmm. be okay. That's what we both thought going into this. We were I like, assumed oh. it would be like, oh, you know, curvy, extra large butt women who normally are not of the skinny type of look that is considered traditionally beautiful out there. Perhaps... They will have their time in the sun in this thing, which even though, again, it still screams scam from top to bottom at the start of me. I was like, maybe there's something with some positive intent in here, some body positivity. I felt the same way. Yep. If your central tenet is about large butts, which again, traditionally occur on larger women, you would think there would be some, even that is not what this is. No, it's a lie from top to bottom. Um, And for someone to try to call this a religion, I think, is it's. I mean, legally, I, I he might be able to get away with it. I don't really know if he's registered as a religious organization or not. Does that mean all his membership <laughs> fees and like the book profits are untaxed? Uh, yeah. I mean, if he was a, if he was a registered as a religion, I I'm not sure as a religious organization. Sorry, I'm not sure um what the process is for that, but I know. People have done it for other dubious faiths before, so it can't be that complicated. So, yeah, I mean, presuming this guy registers himself as a religious organization, then, yeah, he would be um, 
free of <laughs> free of taxes. I think cool. most, if not all, taxes um, in the U.S. anyway. But I don't know, man. Like, there's also a much better way to deliver something like this. So, I mean, let's play. Let's let play. Um, you know. Devil's advocate here. Let's play a Molkos advocate here. <laughs> That's his name for Satan, Molkos. Let's say you're really a person who has a vision, you know, and you really believe that you've been visited by some kind of deity. Look, man, if that's your internal experience, there's nothing wrong with writing about it, right? And saying, hey, I was tripping out on fucking drugs and on this beach in Thailand in 96. And like, I had this vision that I can only describe as religious and, or spiritual. Um, this is what I saw. Because of that, I now believe in this, you know, maybe you should consider it. As much as I don't agree, as much as I don't like, I wouldn't believe in that, I think it's okay to put something like that out into the world. Like, hey, this was my experience. Maybe you should think about believing in it too. Um, and just kind of leaving it at that. Like, if you want to have a website and be like, this is my religion, this is what I believe, I don't have a problem with that. But this whole trying to get do like membership cards and paying for fake testimonials, lying about testimonials, putting up fake pictures. And I mean, of course, you know, we don't know that there isn't a Michael who said, a daughter solved all my problems. But like, you know, if you use common sense, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think the house of cards falls pretty easily there. Um, it, like you said, every part of this sort of screams that it's a scam rather than someone's real desire to, tell other people about a spiritual experience they had. And that's so sad to me because I'm not religious. And even I, you know, I understand that religion has a function for a lot of people, but using religion to con people is to me, one of the worst things you can do. And it's one of the reasons why I loved, um, um, you thinking of James Randi perhaps? Yes. Yes. Um, so one of the reasons that I, I love James Randi and idolized him in his life, rest in peace. Um, is because he went after people who used religion to scam others. Um, so televangelist Peter Popoff is one of the people that Randy um, kind of unmasked, sort of, well, not unmasked, but um, figured out how he was scamming people and, you know, essentially got rid of Popoff. Um, I mean, he this guy was doing things like, using social engineering to collect information from people and then pretending as though he was getting that information from divine sources. And then people would give him money because they thought that he was divine and that giving him money would mean that they would become wealthy themselves, even though that's the fucking opposite of how you get wealthy. <laughs> you don't give it to other people. You have to keep it for yourself. I mean, you know, obviously some donations here and there are always good and helping your friends and whatnot. But if some, Listen, folks, if some asshole is like, if you send me money, I'm going to make you rich and it's not a real investment. Don't do it. I, I mean, I'm even I'm even skeptical of investments un unless it's like buy stock in Apple or something. I don't know, you know, uh, sort of a, a more traditional investment. But if someone's like, this is my scheme or just send me five dollars in the mail, like. And the Lord right will off. bless you with wealth, which is a thing that no. pops up so many times in this book. Literally, just pray to Lord Adonis, pray to King Adonis, and he will grant you wealth. Okay, Paris. Yeah, I mean, like, prayer, I, and I get that prayer has a function for people, but but that is just, oh, it's just the perversion of, of faith and spirituality. And even as someone who is not spiritual, it makes me fucking bonkers, because I hate to see people taken advantage of. Ah. <sighs> All right. Well, how about we get into what's actually inside these pages here? <laughs> yeah. All right. We've just got a, a cavalcade of notes that we'll just go through. Like, yeah, usually so... we do like a summary of like the plot of a book or something. Listen, the the best way I can summarize this is Cliff's Notes version of the Bible with a couple of twists in it that are ass based. And also diverting things away from what Christianity would be into, no, actually worship King Adonis over here and send him your prayers and perhaps money. Mm -hmm. 
So as we said before, it's poorly written. It's missing words, sentences that don't make sense, bad pacing. It's also basically all plagiarized from the Bible, and but somehow made worse. Somehow this guy made the Bible worse. <laughs> it, it's like, really how? ridiculous. How did y'all do that? Yeah, I mean, there's like a trinity in here, of course, but it's not the same trinity. His trinity is King Adonis himself, literally the guy who wrote this, claiming he is the creator of the world and the embodiment of another higher creator god. I mean, he's basically new black Jesus. Yes. Is kind of what he's trying to tell people. He's like, oh, I'm, yeah. I He does mention regular Jesus at one point. Like, he does, but regular... it's like, that's a lie from Constantine of Rome. Yeah, yeah, he tries to say that Constantine made up a OG, like Middle Eastern Jesus. Well, not OG because the Jesus mythos was in a lot of different cults, like the Mithras cult and you know, has has its place in a lot of other faiths too. Some anyway, I won't go down a rabbit hole there. But the Jesus we all typically associate, you know, the brown Jesus from the Middle East, although, you know, Western people love to paint him as white. He's trying to say that that Jesus was an invention by Constantine and Jesus is false. Like It's really me, the author of this book, that is the real creator of the universe. Also, there is Issa Arania, sort of the holy spirit slash divine figure, you know, the, the ass by which all asses are, men are measured. Are measured. Yes. So. Oh, and we get those measurements, don't you worry. Specific measurements. In fact, it is 47 hips, I believe, and 24 yes. waist. Look, dude, as a woman currently with a 47-inch uh, hip, 47-inch waist, as a woman, car bleh, I can't talk. You're so mad, Paris. I, I am so incensed. Um, <clears throat> Me too. Listen, dude, as a woman who currently has 47 inch hips. Um, thanks, pandemic. Uh, I can tell you my waist ain't no 24 inch. <laughs> That's like some fucking anime character shit where it's like ridiculously thin yeah. proportions up top. But then... Super exact. I'm sure there's some women out there with that, you know, measurement. The only women, the only women I know of who have, who I've heard of, who have um, a, a very dramatic waist to hip ratio is um, the original Vampira. Um, damn, I forgot her name. I think she was a Finnish. Um, I think she was a Finnish descent or something. But anyway, she had a really crazy, like, you know, I don't know, eight, nine, 18 inch waist and 38 inch hips or something like a 20 inch difference. Yeah. And, you know, but that's pretty rare. Yeah. I mean, other, it, other than people who corset down their yeah. waists, it's plausible. It is, it's yeah, not, but, I'm not, we're not saying that that's like terrible or bad to have, yeah. but codifying a specific measurement as divinely inspired and in what you should struggle to try to achieve is horrendous bullshit. For something yeah. that claims to be in any way body positive, which it is not in any way. Well, and it's too bad because I understand where this comes from. Because he's trying to elevate. Um, it, it comes up a few times. He talks about this uh, a couple of different groups in Africa. He's clearly trying to elevate the black woman and characteristics that are, I guess, typically of these certain groups in Africa. Like the Khoi Khoi. Or, mm -hmm. And I think he mentions a few others. So... And in in some of these cultures, apparently, it is common for women to have um, a lot of excessive fat tissue on their hips and um, and butts and thighs. So they might have really crazy measurements like this. And and I get it. Like you're trying to uplift a group that's been marginalized, and that is good. But like Chris just said, trying to tell everyone you don't you ain't shit unless you have 47 inch hips and a 24 inch waist isn't like you're not divine. You're not special unless you have this figure. It's not the way to go about that. Cause what about all the other black women in the world who don't look like that? Plenty of people don't. What about all the people of any, and he keeps saying how this is for all people. It's for all races and all faiths and whatever, or all people. And I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like if it's for everyone, why are you saying that only the specific kind of ratio is worthy? There is a couple of lines in there about like, you know, if you're not blessed with this, you can do some squats and eat the correct diet and you will find yourself to be, you know, more towards that sort of figure that we consider divinely blessed. 
Dude, and not I, that easy. Not yeah, that easy. It, it's not that simple. And I I just don't think you should section off a specific thing. It, because even big butts come in all shapes and sizes yeah. and ratios and measurements. And guess what? They're all pretty great, guys. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I'm super equal opportunity when it comes to stuff like that. Everyone is unique. And I sincerely believe everyone is beautiful in their own way. You don't have to strive for anything more than what you are. Sure, you can improve things if you want to aim for something, but don't orient yourself entirely around achieving a specific look, especially if it's something that's not, you're not sort of prenaturally disposed to automatically like that. And I, that's what one of the things I really, really hate about something that I thought might have had a positive note in there somewhere. Yeah, and there's a bunch of other really negative mes messaging for women in this, by the way, which is another reason why it's so bad. Not even related to body stuff, it's other shit. Um, I know we kind of got a little off track there uh, getting into the stupid measurement thing, but um, I, I wanted to give some, some examples since we started this rant um, on the technical aspects of the book. I wanted to give some examples of how bad the writing was and how it wasn't edited. Um, you have inherited envy in your heart. Just a little and awkward. suddenly, and suddenly, Molkos cried out with a loud voice, saying, "Who cometh with me to seek my face?" <laughs> There's a lot of this like fake ass holy speech because this is what yeah. a Bible is supposed to sound like. Yeah. Um, there's a specific example somewhere that I wrote down. Oh yes, be rest assured that your tribulations shall truly pass. Be rest assured is some grammatically terrible shit because rest is the verb there. Rest, You are resting assured. So be rest assured is just some shit ass attempt at sounding holier because be at the start of a sentence sounds vaguely biblical. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to randomly pick a page and, and open it and see. Um... I'll do that too. You know what? Let's do, let's do this together, Paris. I'll open to a random page and you... Um, open to a random page as well. I'll just let this book fall naturally open. <laughs> okay. We are at um, the chapter Ritual Ablution. Oh, boy. Unto you, who have, uh, ha, unto you who have a good ear, listen to what Adonis, the Lord of Heaven, has to say to this generation. You must therefore be converted and receive ablution for the renewing and remission of your sins unto heaven. That if you repent of your sin, saying, Adonis, God of heaven and earth, I profess with my mouth that you are the one true God, and Isa Elohim is the Holy Spirit and is alive in heaven and earth. You shall be mulcos free from guilt and shame, and your <laughs> sins are forgiven thee. Did you notice that the word mulcos just randomly appears in the middle of a sentence? As that a happens verb a or lot. Adverb? That happens yeah. a lot. I'll come back to my theory on that a little bit later. Yep. After this manner, you must indeed receive ablution with water in the name of Adonis, the heavenly father, so you may enter his kingdom. That after the ablution, you are purified and protected in the name of Adonis Elohim and your body made sacred. For all are sinners and are unclean in the eyes of King Adonis and cannot enter heaven lest they have received ablution in his name. For the ablution is the cleansing of sin unto heaven. An eternal life. Now the Calypgian woman must put on the sacred white robe and receive the ablution for the edification of her soul by the priest and priestess of the church, and she must be laid and lifted with outstretched hands and immersed into the water. For when she comes up, she is purified in the spirit of Adonis and admitted into the church. Now the commandment of ablution is not only unto women who are Calypgian, but unto all who are believers in King Adonis. You must profess that King Adonis is Lord and creator of heaven and earth and receive the ablution in his name as the heavenly father and creator so you may enter into the kingdom of God. Like, it's yeah. just saying the same shit over and over. Accept me as the ruler of all. Accept me as the ruler of all. Please accept me as the creator and ruler of all. King Adonis, um, send me your my... money for twenty three ninety nine a month. <laughs> Minor note, it is Calipigian, not Calypgian. Oh, the sorry. Y is before the G. Okay. Uh, that's that's my bad eyes there. Oh, no, it's okay. I did the same thing for a while. Um, okay, so I have randomly opened to page 40. This is just a list of laws or something. I'm going to read laws 17 through uh, 20. <clears throat> 17. Oh, I'm sorry, 18 through 20. It is honorable to be the house behind the fork in the road. For when someone comes to a fork in the road, they should take it. What? Which fork should they take? What? Which fork? Both? The house? <laughs> but the road to get to you should be narrow and straight. 
I thought you said it was a fork, bro. And then, so that was 18, then 19. This is 20. A woman should share the bed of a king with other women than to keep a beggar all to herself. And it is better still for a man to be found dead among riches than to be seen living among beggars. If that's not the most damning passage in this whole fucking text, I don't know what is. A lot of prosperity gospel in here, let me tell you. I'm just going to start pulling lines from the notes here. There is this one on page 32. It's verse 14, because of course it's arranged by verses to be more like a Bible, because that's what a Bible be. Yeah, right. And I shall bring the knowledge of Issa to the world again through a koi koi woman who shall be captured, humiliated, and mutilated before the time of Aquarius for my purpose. <sighs> What? Uh, why? Why? That's even worse than some of the Old Testament God shit, dude, where you're just saying specifically, I will sacrifice this one woman in my name. I believe this is a reference to the Sartier Bartman stuff later yeah, on in the book. Which will, oh God, which was a whole other thing. Um, Yeah, I mean, a lot of this is him trying to uplift <sighs> kind of like, I don't know, for for example... In his version, Adam and Eve are like round two. Round one, uh, the f- kind of the first man and woman are a man and woman from Africa. Um, and then I forget what happens. And then later on, it's Adam and Eve. Also, Satan is a white guy and turns into a unicorn to trick whoever the first woman was. I don't even remember. It was like Mossy? Mayo. No, Mos- Mossy. Mossy was the man. Yeah. I don't remember the woman. Sauda? Sauda. Sauda. Sauda was the daughter, I think. Of yeah. OCA, Sauda was the one that Satan uh, basically had sex with. You know, Satan's a white guy and turns to a unicorn to trick her, which like, yeah, sure. I mean, fine. Um, but he he's just kind of like mixing up all kind. It's like fantasy blender religion with a lot of this. You know, he takes the, so I, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Apocrypha, but the books in the Bible that were kind of taken out of the commonly distributed Bible. Uh, the book of Enoch is one of them. And in the book of Enoch, it talks about angels coming down from heaven and, and question mark, raping question mark, having consensual sex with question mark, um, women on earth and producing a race of half angels, half people. So in this, so that's, that, that's like the actual book, uh, an apocryphal book of the Bible, book of Enoch. But in this, in Donatology, he takes that and kind of flips it on its head. And he's like, Oh, and now it's female angels fucking human males, and you should be grateful. You know, he tries to reverse things like anything that he feels is maybe too Eurocentric. He tries to make a little African, which, you know, I mean, it would be... (laughs) My problem is that this isn't like a fun fiction novel where he's turning, you know, the Judeo-Christian faith on, on its head or whatever, and and making some fun commentary. He's just like, oh, I'll make things explicitly black, and then I'll just make women basically sex slaves, which is kind of what... (laughs) Yeah, we'll get into that in a bit, A lot of this amounts to. Um, I don't know. It's almost like he's trying to trick people, and and it sucks because... (sighs) It sucks because I want... Of course, I want people who have been marginalized to be uplifted, you know? But this isn't the way to do it. Not by scamming like, people and also people that assumably the main his almost his main target here is that type of woman. Yeah. Cause he wants them to worship him with their shaking butt backside dances, which is And like, their yonis. Yeah. He he there's so many times he was like, To worship me, King Adonis, you must do the ritual dance where you shake your backside with a sensual rhythm. Essentially listen, this has all the markings twerk of a cult in for it. Jesus. <laughs> There are Twerk for Adonis videos, but I think they were taken down. Yeah, I can't find any of that work. A lot of this has the it, it has the markings of a cult. There's a chapter about don't associate with unbelievers, mm-hmm. which ba- just means cut off anyone that doesn't accept the Adonatology thing. A, another chapter that's just worship me with your sensual backside dance and insinuated, of course, is, you know, have sex with me as, as it is the sensual ritual that is the greatest thing you could do. To worship mm-hmm. King Adonis. Give me yeah. your money. Give me your time. Give me your love. Stay away from anyone that says this might not be a good idea. Yep. Um, and then whenever he, he tries to 
I mean, he basically just takes a bunch of myths either from the Bible or from uh, like there's a Greek myth about Venus and having nice asses, whatever. You can look it up. The Calipigian uh, Aphrodite or Calipigian Venus is a, a series of famous statues and it, you know, it ties into this this myth about how if people were into worshiping butts, they would probably worship Venus or Aphrodite because, of course, love goddess, butts, sex, etc. Anyway, he basically just went on Wikipedia and kind of shittily rewrote like that myth, some shit from the Bible, um, a chapter about Sartya Bartman, which we'll talk about briefly because it's just so fucking traumatic, which is another thing I'm really mad at this at this author about. Um, but even when he tries to he kind of tries to be like, oh, but I believe in evolution, though. But what he writes doesn't make any sense. It says primates were created four million years ago and God evolved them into modern humans one million years ago. And I was like, that's not right. <laughs> I mean, science isn't perfect. We talked about this on the show before. But from what we know, from what this current science tells us, I mean, if we're talking primates, primates were on the scene a long ass time ago yeah you're talking the predecessor to like lemurs and shit that's like 65 million years ago i mean it th you know there's obviously like a it's it's somewhat debated but it was between 65 million and 80 million years ago or something um and the earliest human ancestors in the form of hominin i assume he's talking about hominin when he says primate but he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about so i mean if he's talking about hominins that goes back somewhere between four to six million years. But of course, like that's always being reevaluated as we find more fossils. And like, I haven't been an anthropology student in a decade, so I, I could be a little off, but I know that I'm, I know that what he wrote is wrong. Um, and then if we're talking homo sapiens, I mean, they didn't emerge as a distinct species until about like 300 to 350,000 years ago, not a million years ago. So I don't really, again, it's this guy skimmed Wikipedia, poorly rewrote a bunch of Wikipedia articles and then published it as his book to worship his dick. Fuck this. It's horrendous. It's truly some of the most horrendous shit we've ever written. And we've even read other scammy shit before. You mean we've ever read? Yeah. <laughs> Not written. Read, yeah. I, bad word. No, that's okay. Um, but anyway, normally I'm not going to get upset about a book unless, unless I feel like it could really hurt someone. And I think, I think someone might be hurt by this. I mean, I... You know, I think it's bad to say, oh, well, how would someone be stupid enough to fall for this? Because sometimes people fall for things not because they're stupid, but because their need to believe in something greater or their need for hope is so great that it surpasses their ability to think about things in a reasonable way. And and though that's what I worry about with something like this, is that you have a bunch of people who are right now with a pandemic ravaging the world coming off, you know, the era of Trump in the United States and with China, with um, Uyghurs and concentration camps. I mean, not that, not that there's ever been a period of the world where everything was fucking 100% peace doves, you know, coming out of my ass or whatever, but... Your sacred, um, holy ass. Oh, my, my holy ass. peace doves. God damn it. Um, but I guess the point I'm getting at is this book appearing now is dangerous. It could put people in danger of falling under the spell of a cult leader. Um, I really hope that that doesn't happen. I hope this, I hope he f fails. I hope he falls on his face with all this stuff. Um, <laughs> Paris, I wonder if we're the only per per people that have actually bought a copy of this book. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it just seems so. It's just so fucked up to try to say this is your religion when you're just like, just worship me, though. Um, anyway, there's a line that says, trust no one fully. Um, oh yeah. There's a line about paying for reviews. Chris, can you read that? Okay. I kind of yeah. Page 39. I, I was going to find that this was a hilarious, perhaps stab at, uh, you know, terrible book club type things here. I wonder if he has a Google alert set up for him. We'll find out shortly, I suppose. Oh, I don't care. I know. I, mean, I don't. We're reviewing, but... we're reviewing his book. More people are going to hear about his book from this episode than... <laughs> I know. After a lot of other ventures, so... Okay, page 39, line 6. Contempt from others comes without a price, but know this, it is far better to pay for praise than to receive free criticism. Is it? Is it better to pay people to say nice things about you, even if it's not real? Does that make any sense? If Does you that think help about you that? grow at all as an artist or person or anything? I'm, I don't know about that. 
Like, the biggest problem with this book is that it's just full of bad advice. There's prosperity gospel about, <laughs> like, you know, literally run away from poverty is one line where it's oh, like, if, oh, if you're impoverished, just flee. It says just if you encounter pro if you encounter poverty, flee is the advice given to you. <laughs> oh yeah, so easy. I'll just run. I'll just go in the other direction. Thanks, Mister. I was gonna keep walking my straight and narrow path until you told me to flee from poverty. <laughs> So there's that. I mean, there's like diet tips in here about like eat only specific, like it's like eat organic strawberries and blueberries and sardines and tuna. Avoid uh, beef and pork because it gives you cancer. Okay. Yeah. Red meat and pork might not be something you want to eat all the time, but it's not yeah. directly responsible for all can Like no, he's not saying all cancers, but like it's not. It, it's just like this. If you a eat a diet, if you eat a diet very heavy in red meats, like sure. pork and beef, it it. There are there are um, not causal data, not like, oh, we know because he ate that pork chop, he got cancer. But like there's relational data to suggest that if you eat a diet high in red meat, it may lead to cancer because more people that eat that way end up with cancer. But again, saying it like that is just not the way to say it. It would make more sense to be like, hey, maybe limit your intake of red meats because it has it has been shown that it may lead to cancer and then like put the link of a reputable medical article under <laughs> no this is the holy journal. word of king adonis himself it is irrefutable paris much like his holy word about sexual morality which is conflicting uh... and extremely misogynist let me tell you because boy dudes can be polyamorous but ladies you just best be part of someone's harem because that's just the way dudes be and also try to save yourself for marriage, he he doesn't specifically say you must, but you should try. But also, it doesn't say anything about ladies being polyamorous, which isn't what polyamory would be when both genders are allowed to partake in that. It's polygamy, I believe, when mm -hmm. it's just the male partaking well, in it. Well, he says that it's okay for women to have sex with other women when it's part of a threesome with a man. Of course. Yeah. Just this, like... The, the classic way that people will twist polyamory into just being strictly beneficial for them only, where they don't have to yeah. deal with any of the other things that might, you know, require them to, I don't know, grow as a person, develop a mature sense of how to go about a relationship and manage relationships with multiple people. There's an ethical way to do polyamory. It is difficult. It requires a lot of communication. It isn't just, well, I get to fuck and you only get to fuck other things that I find sexually attractive. Yeah, I mean, personally, I have issues with polyamory just because, I don't know. I don't need to go off on a rant about my personal views. It it's doesn't not have for to be me. for everyone. It doesn't I'll, have to be not, for everyone. It's not for me. Um, and I have seen it negatively impact a lot of people I know. So I think that's why I have negative views about it. But I'm sure there are some people out there that practice it ethically and who are a mature adults who can manage their own relationships. Like y'all can do what you want as long as it's consensual and open and honest and whatever. If it, if it truly makes you happy and you're not just doing it for someone else. Great. But yeah, that's, this that's is not a classic, what's featured here. Classic example of how that's not, uh, Oh, so I have a note. I have a note. Jesus Christ to page one Oh nine to one Oh one Oh eight to one Oh nine is just throw this whole man away into a fire. So I'm going to navigate to pages one Oh eight and one Oh nine the best I can because I have I have pictures of every two pages from Chris because we only bought one copy. I wasn't gonna fucking <laughs> buy another forty dollar book. I wasn't no. I didn't even want to ship it to her because we already no. spent too much money on this shit. Well and because I'm living in another state and I don't want to have to deal with bringing too many terrible books back with me. Just like so. extra weight on the plane back. Well I'm already I already have to like send myself packages because I can't fit everything I need to take packages. Imagine having to cram this shit ass book to send to yourself. <laughs> Imagine TSA being like, what the fuck? Like my my luggage would have like a donatology. Ma, can I still be a feminist and like men? Um, and then like my chain belts and like all my jewelry and all my makeup and like, This person has like, the worst taste shirts. in books I've ever seen. What <laughs> Oh, my really satanic band shirts, like. <laughs> just trying to untangle the mystery of Paris from packages. Yeah. I, I, they're just like, ma'am, we need to we need to have an interview with you. And I'm like, God damn it. 
but I'm a white woman in America. Why would I get singled out? And, and they're they just like, plunk down at the ontology. They're like, yourself. man, we're going to be straight with you. We just couldn't understand what your deal was. <laughs> yeah. What's your deal? I just have to know. I do a podcast called Terrible Book Club. Oh, uh, okay. Back on the plane. Back okay. on the plane. Not as interesting. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to read page 108 to 109. Uh, these passages made me want to throw this whole man away into a fire. Um, because obviously not literally, but it's a, you know, it's a colloquial phrase among the youth these days to just throw the whole man away. Um, so I thought that I thought this fit. Um, um, oh shit. I think it actually, um, I just (laughs) hit myself in the face with the mic. I think it actually starts the page before, um, you know what? We should just read all the laws of sexuality. I can do that for us, Paris. I mean, I have it right here. I'm the one with um, the easy to read copy. I mean, I can I can read this easily. How about you read? Um, let's do half and half. So why don't you read one through uh, 16 and then I will take over for 17 through 29. Okay, here you go. The laws of sexuality, according to King Adonis himself. Through the validation of the Holy Spirit, Adonatology advocates sexual love between willing partners. For though Adonis dwells in man as spirit, men and women are spiritual and lovers in nature. Okay, therefore, okay. Therefore, love and beauty comes from Adonis as nature comes from Adonis and is given unto man and woman to the practice of free will, even if they are not married. Okay. That right. they may consent and agree in kindred spirit to lay with each other in sensual love and pleasure. All right, I'm on board so far. How then can the human race populate if matrimony is destined for all? For surely some will love for marriage, some will love for simple pleasures, and some for spiritual connection. Okay, okay. What say you to them who are born out of wedlock, rape, or molestation? Surely their birth is not a curse or a mistake, but a blessing that life has been given to them from the Holy One. Uh, Okay, it's a little, it's got got a little light sprinkling of anti-abortion, but it's fine. A donatology advocates polyamory, a natural man loving many women, for it is the nature of male, whether he is man or beast, to spread his seed. Oh, boy. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Buckle up, Plane's buckle going up, down. Alert. But Plane's let, going down. But let no woman offer her body or mouth up to be penetrated, entered, or spit upon by males of multiple consents, whether they be two in number or many. For a woman's body is more valuable than a man's. Doesn't life come from the woman's body as it did from the Holy Spirit? Surely it does. Even a sinner will pay the price for the company of a woman. For if a woman must inquire about the nature of a man, then the thing she inquires about him is not of her nature. What does that even mean? Now the woman who lays with two or more men in a single encounter is wicked and damns her yoni, for she degrades her womanhood and God will not favor her for his mercy will not be on her life. Know that a woman's body is sacred, desirable, and more treasured than a man's. Hear that? Your pussy be damned. (laughs) Damned! For out of the woman's womb comes purity, and out of her sensual beauty brings a woman marriage, wealth, and honor. Now, to the odontologist woman who is a virgin and wishes to marry, she should wait and hold herself until marriage to give herself away to her husband on the day of her marriage. Mm. But if she cannot wait, she should use wise judgment and find a suitable companion to lay safely with to avoid any ill diseases or premature pregnancy. Okay, okay. He's at least for uh, conception, for um, contraception. Odontology states that it is honorable for a virgin... Calipigian woman to offer up her backside to a man for love making that he may enter her lovingly so they may each reach orgasmic pleasure together and that she may preserve her virginity Ahem. but if an adonatologist woman deems a man not worthy to enter or touch her backside it is of her own accord and of the backside of the non-virgin Calipigian adonatology believes anal love making from a man to woman is the way to true love and ecstasy to orgasmic pleasure Now, these are the six erotic pleasures of the woman's backside to achieve heightened orgasm. Visual, caressing, kissing, spanking, anal lingus, and anal penetration. Sexual union between a man and his female companions should be conducted the day before entering the house of worship so that their minds and bodies are free from sexual thoughts that they may worship clean of heart and body and mind. Now, hear this. Here spelled H-E-R-E. Adonatology law advocates marriage or a sexual union between a man and a woman. A man laying with another man is forbidden 
as alters a man's nature and turns his behavior effeminate. The plane has blown up in the sky at this point. <laughs> For does not the homosexual disguise himself as a woman or a transvestite? God, I can't believe I just had to read that word. To live what? to deceive men of a heterosexual nature? What the For fuck? For it is within feminine deceit that he attempts to trick the heterosexual male into his ways, to drag him down into sin, darkness, and shame. What the fuck? Oh, wait. Oh, it keeps going. Man is not an outlet, but a plug. And is not designed to be penetrated like a woman, lest an unnatural self arises within him and becomes his dominant energy. What the fuck? Homophobic, transphobic, transphobic, weirdly like e e penetration phobic for <laughs> men. Like even even a woman in a anyway, it goes on. But let a feminine woman lay with the feminine woman. For if a man lays with two or more women in sexual union and they all consent to it, let the women please the man first and then each other, for this is the right way for the women to retain their femininity and no masculine self arises within them. Now let no man take any woman or any child by sexual force, for this is wicked, and let no man or woman lay with any beast. Okay, fine, I'm with you on 27. Adonatology does not advocate femdom, men being sexually dominated by women. <laughs> Real specific call out Fuck there. You. Like... Let people, like, I just, what, that's like, such a weird extra thing to put in there. It's so afraid. It's got this you know, macho masculine energy of, like, never let anyone take advantage. Never, ever be in a position where you're not completely in power. Oh, oh I got two more. Adonatology forbids any man's anus to be entered by a woman or by any instrument. For as God <laughs> burns Sodom and Gomorrah, surely he will strike down a similar man in this generation. And lastly, man is to be the master over the feminine, not her slave. Just fuck all the way off yeah. with all this shit. Like, again, that super macho never ever be put in a position where you're not completely in control and in power for it is devilish and sinful. To, like, I, 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 it, it drives me up the wall here. How are you so afraid of this shit, dude? Like, not to mention, like, if you're talking about, like, femdom being bad, like, isn't, isn't, isn't the person. Who's the who's the bottom in control of the situation? Aren't they really like in charge? Especially if it's a whole consent thing. It's just a it's it's just a, a bizarre fear. Um, yeah. So of course, you know the other thing that I, I have a huge issue with, of course, being men can have sex with as many people as they want at the same time, but women, nah. No. They can only make love to another woman if there's a man involved. But also please the man first, because mm -hmm. God forbid he is not in the position of control. Yeah. And then that whole shit about like men being, I hate to say it, but it's in the text, but homosexuals are really transvestites. I mean, that's an outdated word. I know that some, I know that there are some people who are okay with using transvestite or, tra or transsexual, but it, you know currently it's generally not an accepted term <laughs> and the way that he talks about this is totally wrong he's totally conflating gay men and people who don't conform to um the gender expression they were given at birth and it's like this isn't the same thing at all i mean i don't think i need to really explain that anymore but it's gross and i hate it and the whole and, masculine and feminine energy thing which yeah. just needs to get thrown in the garbage totally yeah, and there's no real reason. Like, there's no actual reason given. It's just about how their energy is going to be made bad. It's like, fuck yeah, you, because dude. feminine and the, the specific call out to Femdom to me is like, you know, like he he sounds clicked like over, somebody had a bad time once. Yeah, yeah, he clicked over onto that site on that site of Pornhub and like didn't like it and decided he had to damn it as entirely sinful. Like, dude, if you, I'm sorry, man, if you can't let your girl have the upper hand sometimes. You're you're missing out. Well, look, look, dude. Like everyone's entitled to whatever consensual sex they want to engage in, um, and that's the whole point here, right? But I think, I think when you're in your religious text, when you're like, I don't know, it's interesting that he's like, oh, it's only if they all consent, and like you shouldn't take anyone by force. But I mean, you're really you're if people want to follow this religion. You're really uh, pushing, pushing them to consent to these things, right? Especially for um, you in particular. It's really coercion, 
when you're telling people that they can only be part of your religion if they do this and oh well they'll be they'll be more loved by god and more wealthy if they do all the right things if they have all the right kinds of sex with the right people um you know that's when that's when consent becomes coercion and that's when it becomes dangerous all right well that's all terrible um there's a story in here about um spaceships in egypt <laughs> i don't know yeah, if we really need to talk to this shit, Paris. <laughs> so, i don't know there's a story about this is this is where like this is the Our... middle of the book but it's it's a early in the, there's a little bit of this early on too but like this was the moment where i was like oh this is maradonia dude this <laughs> whole thing is acidonia <laughs> It's Acidonia. <laughs> Early on with like the creation myth and his like it's Mokoth and like his new names for demons and things like that. It it has this vaguely Maradonia flavor. And then all of a sudden we're getting into a metal rectangle in the middle of the desert in Egypt <laughs> to ascend into space, which is some of that like spaceship shit that was in Maradonia. The, are they going to have cold light waves next to Paris? Well, I think that I was like, well, aren't, isn't there a spaceship in the Bible? And there's like sort of a thing where Ezekiel sees some wheel and people have like interpreted that as a spaceship. But it doesn't, I don't know. But this story, it seems like this story, he just took the part of that story where a deity comes down in a chariot and then they have people build a spaceship. I don't really remember why. Honestly, I didn't care. Yeah. Because it was also poorly written. It was all clearly just stories retold in a in an awful way <laughs> from other things and it had nothing to do with his i mean and and that's the worst part of this this religious text right is that the stories have nothing to do with the tenets that he sets out for the faith normally biblical stories or religious stories are there to teach you something and to say well that's why we don't put things in our asses because God nuked this town. You yeah. know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, there's something there. Um, don't put anything in your butt or your town will get smitten. Yeah. Or, you know, or like, and that's why we don't eat apples because they killed all of our ancestors. I, you know, whatever. I'm just, I'm just saying whatever comes to mind, but typically the stories illustrate a point that is, that is then an important part of the faith, right? Like being generous, helping your fellow man, um, for, you know, if we want to go non-silly vibes, uh, you know, like when Jesus poses as a beggar, um, and sees how he's treated by people, you know, and that whole thing is like, I mean, that, that also has some maybe connotations that aren't great. Like, oh, just be nice to them because you never know who they could be because you always want to be in good standing instead of just, just be nice to people, even if they're not Jesus, even if they're, you don't really think they're Jesus in disguise. But anyway, point being. The old There's Jesus rich... disguise. He gets you all the time. <laughs> oh, I just walked by this one guy who was asking for a Whopper out of the Burger King. Turns out he was Jesus, and now I'm in hell. Fuck. <laughs> if only you had given Jesus a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. No, he specifically wanted a Whopper. And Oh, I was referring to I, that, that I, book. Yeah, That book that you... <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, Jesus specifically wanted that Whopper. Let me tell you, he was really wanting to try that Beyond Whopper, and I, I took that chance away from him. Now he sent you to the beyond. <laughs> <laughs> that was your punishment. Um, anyway, there's a weird spaceship chapter. It doesn't mean anything. Why do I care that Prince Hamatuk and Ceresis were taken up into heaven in the fucking metal rectangle that the Pharaoh had built? Or like, it... I think it was bad because someone didn't believe in Adonis or something. I don't know. There is a line about how Sauda was seduced by Satan because she was like non-curvaceous. And she was sad and miserable. And it, it sort of alludes to like, yeah, to people who aren't, who don't have these extreme proportions being lesser than, oh, so they're just plunged into eternal poverty and failure and left to fuck Satan unicorns. Yeah, like, that's, I, I just, that's your fate. Sorry. Yeah. And it's like, and he has this line like, oh, be grateful and confident in your natural beauty. Yeah. Unless you're a sad, flat ass, soft tummy bitch, I guess. Yeah. Because that's the attitude he has. Because he says that, Oh, that's right. We didn't mention this. So not only do you have to have these really um, egregious proportions of very narrow waist, very large hips, you have to have a flat stomach. You and must. You can't be, and if you're obese or overweight, that is against God. I don't really know how you have a huge ass and you're not overweight. I mean, just by nature of the extra weight you have in your ass, 
unless the rest of you is extremely tiny. It's not like we can decide where the fat tissue deposits in what yeah. proportion based on how you exercise and eat, dog. Like, again, generally, larger butt means softer stomach. Yeah, and it also, does just because you have a large butt doesn't mean you're going to have a tiny stomach, like a narrow waist. That's not how that works. And yeah, so anyway, so you have to not only have a huge ass and a tiny waist, you also have a flat stomach too. So good luck, yeah. I guess. Good luck, ladies. Um, Nothing about how men should look. Absolutely fucking not a word about what a man should have to do. Zero. Zero things. I mean, I guess you can assume that some of the tenets that don't mention women are for men too, but like... It's never explicitly said. Also, men, you should diet in this way. No. Um, so let's move to... All right. So let's let's talk about how we uh, thought this was about worshiping asses and how it says that it's that like women with huge asses are the divine calipegians and they are above all other women and they are divinely graced and and yeah. all and special Paris, but then if, but then but before you get into that i would just want to make a point if there was ever a thing you could get me to be religious about here it is <laughs> and yet you've ruined it entirely yeah, so so you're pulled into this religion. Let's say you're like Chris. Let's say you're a You a like person. him thick. Yeah, into the big butts and you're like, "Damn, someone someone finally putting her putting the women with the big asses on the pedestal they deserve. You know, we're finally praising them for their figure or or whatever." Great. When, you know, after these years of thin women being in the headlines. Finally. Finally, a place for the large reared. Um Calipigians so be praised. Yes. Um, and then as you're reading, you know, you're like, oh, man, there's a sacred twerk dance. This is great. We can have we can have, you know, sacred praise twerks. This is this is good. Yeah, I'm down. But then, but then. Ah, I found it on page 104 in the laws of polyamory. It states men do not worship the flesh or the buttocks of any woman, for this is an abomination unto the Lord. Only unto Adonis do you worship, for he is holy and righteous and came to the earth made of flesh and dwells among you. Desire and admiration of a woman's body comes naturally in men, but he is not worshiping female flesh. Worshiping the flesh of a woman is a sin, for she is carnal. Cursed is any man who worships a woman's behind, for this is a sexual perversion and against the divine nature of Adonis. Such men are weak and submissive. So you might be wondering, how are we supposed to have sacred twerk dances and how are we supposed to be reading about all, all these lines about how great asses are, but then he tells us that we can't worship, worship asses. And the way that I've understood it is that you can only worship an ass for the Lord. It's just like those like tween uh, or child evangelical dance troops where they're not allowed to dance for pleasure, but they're dancing for the Lord, so it's okay. So they can only do praise dance. So I think this is similar in that, like, you can only worship asses if you're looking at an ass and you're like, praise Adonis. But who's really lying to themselves like that? I mean, I mean even more specifically, I think it's you can shake those booties specifically for my entertainment and pleasure. Me, King Adonis, the creator of all things, who deserves all the booties shaked at him only. So it's okay if he does it. Because he's the creator of all things, and therefore the worship is for him, which is more but or less the other side of the coin that, of what you were talking about. But it's so, I mean, it it's just bizarre that buried in this book, there's three verses where it's like specifically do not worship the flesh, do not worship asses, but then the rest of it is like worship asses. I just, I just think he really could have been a lot more clear about that. <laughs> Because most people are coming to this. I mean, all of the marketing for Adonatology is just pictures of women's asses on Instagram and Twitter. And it, it says, like, hashtag Adonatology. It's so, his fucking hook. Because in the book, he's yeah. like, the, saying Adonatology is worshiping women's asses is an internet myth. An internet myth that you put out there to get people to get yeah. hooked into your fucking scam. Yeah, obviously. I mean, no one else is doing that. Like... 
Yeah, I didn't have to make a whole religion about how much I like a big butt. I'm just sitting back here going, that's a nice one. Cool. And then I move on with my day. Well, and also, as I said before, he could have talked about his spiritual awakening in a way that wasn't so, I don't know, so brutally dogmatic with all these rules and, and, um, anyway. And like specifically always about serving him. Yeah. Yo, what do you think his spiritual awakening really was? I think he was fucked upon drugs on that beach. And I think there was a woman with a big ass like walking away from him into the sunset and like the play of the lights and stuff and the <laughs> ass. And maybe there was music on and everything was like psychedelic and slowed down. He was like, the holy ass! And he <laughs> thought it was an angel. Like, I mean, psychotropic drugs on a beach in Thailand in 96. Yeah. I mean, he's, maybe. Spe- he's very specific about smoke no toxic things or don't drink at all. But he never says anything about no hallucinogens or mushrooms. Yeah. And he tells women like they shouldn't they shouldn't get illegal injections. Into their <laughs> yeah, there's a whole which chapter, I agree with, you know, there's a whole chapter are... inject no illegal substance into your flesh, which I mean, on I mean the, you know, a, a safety clock, concern. Right? Yes. Fine. OK. Yeah, bro- broken clock, right? Also, you know, um, it, it's fine as it is. Trust me, it's beautiful the way it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's also all this, like, if you're sick, the church will pray for you and prayers will heal you. I mean, there's been scientific studies on the positive effects of prayer and how it can, as like a, it has a weird placebo effect on people. It has been documented. So, you know, if you want to pray, that's fine. But if if you're... I don't know if someone tells you just pray and it's fine. That's it. I I, I don't think that, that that's yeah. okay. I th- yeah, I think at this point, Paris, we can just kind of wrap up all the other little dumb bits and pieces that occurred throughout this book. There was a, this is a silly line that has no place anywhere else. I'm just going to drop it here. During all the chapters where it's talking about the spaceship into the heavens that a pharaoh built, a, just like an unnamed pharaoh, also just pharaoh. Um, just pharaoh. They talk about the pharaoh overlooking the construction of this spaceship on the balcony of his kingdom. Bro, how big's your fucking balcony if it's the balcony of the kingdom? I'm imagining a balcony that spans the entire width of the whole thing so he can oversee all. That's the only way I can interpret that. Or it's a particularly lavish or... You know. It's just an example of bad writing. Yeah, the balcony um, of the kingdom is... Oh, uh, dude, I want to find more of the funny uses of the word malkos randomly. The word for Satan just randomly shows up as a verb or other noun right. at times. Here's I, Oh, malkos is a ship randomly? Yeah. Like, Here's my theory on this. He drops this... It's like supposed to replace a word, I think, frequently. And mm-hmm. it's malkos himself covering up a couple words in the text. And hey, if you just paid $50 <laughs> a month... <laughs> I could reveal to you the true word hidden by Mokos himself if you worship me, King Adonis, enough and achieve uh, OT7 or whatever here. You can find out the true words in the book here. That's 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 the only fucking explanation, Paris. That's the only thing that I can think of as to why that's that word keeps appearing in the book randomly to replace other words. Or, alternatively, do you think this is a find and replace error in Microsoft Word? <laughs> but it's it's not. It, there's no way it could be the same word that it's replacing because in every instance, no, it, it has could have to be. Been, a di- it could have been like a part of a word or something. I don't know. I, no, Paris. It's definitely uh, the second level. Like achieve a clearer mind. Fucking con. Oh, there's maybe. no way it isn't. Yeah, I mean, there's one time where it's just the name of a ship. And, like, for me, okay, fine. You're going to be like, oh, the ship was named after Satan because it took her to a bad place. Okay, fine. But all the other times it appears, it doesn't even make sense in the sentence. It's like, and then we mulkos to the bridge. And you're like, what? That's not a verb. Um, I'm telling you, that's, it's, it's the second level scam for the, yeah. the next level of your membership to odontology. Find out what we really meant there. I really just covered up the word went, but if you paid $75 a month, you could find (laughs) out the next one that Mokos covered up. Or, yeah, or it's going to be like, see, my religion is real because the demon Mokos got into my text and put his name everywhere. It's real. (laughs) Um, oh, I almost forgot about one of the most egregious things in this book. So, um... 
for those of you who don't know anything about Sartia Bartman, she was a woman of the um, the Khoi Khoi people that he speaks of in the book. And um, unfortunately, she is an early example of um, the West objective, objectifying and fetishizing women um, who have kind of um, exaggerated measurements because people from her area generally had very large butts and a lot of extra fat on their thighs and, you know, and, um, hips. And she was, I want to say, Oh God, now I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing. There's a very long Wikipedia article on Sartia if you want to read about it, but it's a really, it's a really fucking sad and depressing story about colonialism and racism. Um, and he uses her, this woman who is, <laughs> whose name has already been, you know, just dragged through the mud and, and, and stamped upon, whose memory is already fraught with so much trauma. He uses her to try to uphold this religion. That, to me, is, might be the biggest sin of this entire book. It's really unconscionable to use something like that just to get people to pay you more money for your scam religion. Yeah, he tries to say that she was... Um, uh, was he trying to say that... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> on page 95. And Adonis remembered Sartya and looked down on her from heaven. And in the last month of the year 1811, Sartya was moved by the spirit of Adonis and went to the cathedral and stood before the congregation and was baptized by Joshua Brooks, the Christian priest. And for 22 years, she had been known as Sartya Bartman, but on the day of her baptism, she was christened and given the European anglicized name Sarah. And I don't even think that's true because Sartya is a diminutive of Sarah. So anyway, after she was baptized, Sartya continued to exhibit blah, blah, blah. Um, Oh, because Sartya's mother disobeyed the angel in this story, Sartya did not receive ablution in the name of Adonis the Lord and Savior of the world to receive honor and glory as a Calipigian in the eyes of Adonis and man. So he rewrote her life story to say that this poor woman's mother disobeyed his fucking angel and therefore she didn't get to go to heaven. Fucked up. I just can't imagine oh wait no she does go to heaven somehow i don't know it explains that she does go to heaven um and it was so that the spirit of sarti bartman was taken up on the clouds to heaven by a calipigian angel of the lord and helen of syracuse augustine <clears throat> augustine sorry there's no you at the front there, Agustin. And Benjamin the prophet bore witness to her ascension, and they praised Adonis, and Agustin wept tears of joy. Now, after Sarah's spirit was taken up into heaven, the body of Sartia was not buried, but was taken away by a man named Baron Cuvier to the Museum of Natural History. That is true. Um, <clears throat> um, oh, now, because she was not protected in Adonis the Lord through Issa Urania... Cuvier and his team came with knives and scalpels and cut off Sartia's backside and her genitals and removed her face and brain from her skull and placed her brain in a jar. Her bones, Cuvier had boiled and purified. And Sartia's backside and other remains were put on display in the Museum of Natural History so that many could marvel and mock her in death as they did in her life. After 187 years, Sartia's remains were ordered by Nelson Mandela to be removed from the museum and buried in Africa. So, um... This is true. I don't know about the specific data detail. I mean, I'm sorry. I hate to read something so gruesome. I don't know about the specific details about her genitals and her face being removed and brain put in a jar. I know that her skeleton and a body cast of her was on display in the Museum of Natural History for a long time. Um, and it was a horribly racist eugenic exhibit. You know, it was eventually taken down. Nelson Mandela was one of the people who petitioned for her remains to be repatriated to her homeland, uh, which did happen. But the way that this is phrased, that this woman suffered because she, because she didn't believe in Adonis who wasn't even, who didn't even exist then because her mother didn't believe in an angel. I just, God, fucking rewriting history and tarnishing this woman's memory. I just can't imagine doing this. Again, 
this guy just look adonis just admit it you all you want is for women to fuck you <laughs> that's all you want and you want people's money you don't give a shit about black women oh this this really I, i'm so mad about it and i don't want to go into like all the details of this woman's life and her legacy but to, yeah, just to try to make this woman's traumatic life fit your fucked up fake religion is the worst. I th Honestly, Paris, like that might be one of the notes to sort of wrap this up on because there's not much more to add after something like oh, that. No. There's some other silly shit like, you know, the phrase for thy bunda shows up in the text a couple of times, which is just stupid. And for like, thy ass, apparently. <laughs> for, yeah, it's laughable. But like in comparison to stuff like that. Uh, oh, we forgot, Chris. The city of dreams. It's called the land of Madonia. Oh, my God. The, the final nail in the Acidonia there, coffin. There are so many. So this book. As a final kind of summary, this book is like if the book from episode 50, what was it, Unveiling the Unseen or yeah. the Darkness, Clips whatever of darkness. that was. Eclipse of Darkness. It's like that book mixed with Maradonia, um, mixed with, shit, what was the other thing Woman I said? worship, I believe. Mixed with woman worship. <laughs> Except woman worship, I think, is a lot, a lot. Um, less toxic than this jesus christ mm -hmm. yeah it's like this bizarre and, and then there's it's got this lovely veneer of insane misogyny and a really shallow attempt to uplift people of african or indigenous descent and doing a really bad job of it uh it's awful um can we fix it i mean no the only way well i offered a fix for it the fix is he earnestly describes his spiritual revelation and what he believes, um, sort of as like a, a memoir, a short memoir, a pamphlet, if you will. I don't know how long it would be. And says, you know, this happened to me. This was my experience. This is what I believe now. Um, and it could be organized in a better way. And it could be um, edited by someone professionally. And it would be fine. If this was just some guy saying, hey, Saw an angel, had a big ass. I think big asses are the way to go. It'd be weird, but it would be fine. Um, so it would have to have a, a pretty serious overhaul for this to be salvageable. I that, yeah, that's as but, it you know, stands. It's just proclaiming a proclaiming yourself a god is overkill. Yeah, a little too <laughs> far. <laughs> Dial it back. <laughs> no, and then having all these laws to restrict women's bodies and women's freedom when of course at the outset you say that you're giving women liberation and freedom when in reality no, but you're Paris, adding there, more chains there's a chapter where he says you can be nude all the time and that's good so who's <laughs> really the feminist mm. oh wait i gotta go to page 130 because that was where i was like wait is this really just about having sex with adonis oh oh god what Love and examine your body like a mythical butterfly whose wings carry her to the truth. What does that mean? That's, you know what that sounds like? Like a shitty plaque you find at Target. <laughs> he probably was. Spiritual chic. Um, <laughs> let no one judge you and say to you, why does she do this or that with her body? Why does she not cover up her nudity out of shame and seek forgiveness from Adonis, the Lord of Heaven, for what she does? Let you're, no really, one... you're really saying let no one judge a woman what she does with her body, but you just gave like 30 rules about what a woman needs to do with her body? Get hey, fucked. <laughs> ne don't have sex with two dudes at the same time, but also let no one judge you. Mm -hmm. Also, you can't. You can only be gay if it's for a man in the act of sex. Oh, Paris, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't know if I want to continue on this path anymore. Yeah. The, the, anyway, this is this book should not exist. Out don't of, read it. Out of a lot of the books that we've read, there is almost no value to this whatsoever. No, it, I mean there are plenty of religious faiths out faiths out there of 
more value. Um, I'm not, a, again, I'm not a spiritual person, but if you find um, comfort and purpose in spirituality, there are plenty of pre-existing faiths that are better. Mm-hmm. I would say this is pretty low on the totem pole of faith goodness as a whole. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to conceive of this as a religion developed in good faith. I, I certainly, it has, like Chris said, it has all the hallmarks of um, of a sex cult and pyramid scheme combined to one, which is really special. Um, of course, we don't really know for sure um, until he either succeeds in this venture or it just falls flat and disappears. I don't know. Um <sighs> All right, Paris. Well, I mean, as a final note here, um, body positivity is a nice thing that we should all strive for. No matter what shape you are, someone out there is probably going to be into it. Yep. Some of us like um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, like it big. Some of, some of you like it smaller, you know. Some of you don't, you know, and I, body positivity isn't just for... People of the female yeah. identifying persuasion, you know, it's for all of us. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, don't fall for charlatans, my friends. If you find yourself confronted with someone who is promising you the world and you just need to give them a little money or have a little sex with them, please rethink it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> please just do a little, little Google searching, do a little... Uh, a little talking with some friends or family or people you trust. And um, please don't fall for charlatans like this. I can't imagine how this book would work for anyone. Doesn't make any sense. Even if it got one person under this man's horrible wing, that would be a tragedy. Yeah. All right. Well, on that somber and solemn unfortunate note um let's let's close out the show all right let's let's thank our patrons i'd love to thank dari greg will veronica d jared lynn sinya yakub bobby black cat jensina mayo cat elliot kieran martin j scott luchek j again C tap one and our newest patron pancake Ronan. Welcome pancake Ronan. Um, I am interested to see your pancaking Ronaning skills. Um, if you want to help support the show as well, please subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Um, if you just click that subscribe button once on YouTube, it helps um, us get closer to monetization of the YouTube channel, which could be a cool source of revenue so we can do more fun things for you. Uh, if you want, you can donate $1, $5, $10 a month, or whatever you choose to us on Patreon. If you donate at the $5 level, level or higher, you get access to videos, uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 style commentary on bad TV and movies, um, outtakes, and other random audiovisual weirdness. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Goodreads, and Twitter if you're on those platforms. Most importantly, though, we'd really love if you shared the show on social media and told at least one person about it. Um, or you can leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts if you have the time to do so. If you want to reach out to us directly, you can do so by sending a message to us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Goodreads, or you can send an email to terriblebookclub at gmail.com. So you can send us a tip on Kofi. Yes, uh, you can go to ko-fi.com slash terriblebookclub and send us a one-time tip. So if you can't become a monthly subscriber and you just want to throw us a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars uh, for one time, you can go there and do that. Or a monthly membership of twenty three ninety nine, we will reveal to you <laughs> the mysteries of the terrible faith. Yes, become a terrible demands you. <laughs> terrible demands you to subscribe to pay our Patreon at the ten dollar a month level or higher, where you will access our divine videos <laughs> and sermons about bad media. <laughs> Shake your books in divine, sensual, ritual uh, praise. Wiggle your pages in praise of Cerebro. <laughs> praise Cerebro. <laughs> All right, Paris. With that, I believe mass is concluded. Also, we're only into thick books, right? Yeah. <laughs> only okay. thick. Thicker only the better. Only thick books.
Give us your encyclopedias, your dictionaries, <laughs> your meandering novels that no one cares about. <laughs> Tariq La wants. <laughs> All right, Chris, do you want to? Do we want to? Um, do you want to? <laughs> do you want to go out the way we came in? Okay. I'll rise for yet another chorus of the great prophet Maxwell B. Twenty fours. I think I think we should read uh, from the the verse uh, of that hymn. Bueno. Okay, here we go, Paris. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, I'm ready to say goodbye to this mm, book. Mm. Mm. She's, She's looking good. good. She's, She's got, got a lot of class. class. Big, big hoop earrings, earrings and a big, and a big round, round ass. ass. I crack <laughs> a stupid joke, but it still, still makes, makes her, her giggle. giggle. I'm one, one step, step closer, closer to seeing, seeing that, that booty jiggle. jiggle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a nightmare to try to, like, line up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, uh, should we tell people what the fuck that hymn, that hymn was even from? Just go to YouTube and type in shoddy wanna fuck. It's, it's the a, greatest it's song. It's just a dumb fucking old YouTube video, and it's perfect. <laughs> um, and we have interpreted it... Um, for uh, amusement and critique purposes, please don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Max B is out there looking for it, considering there's a bunch of parodies out there already. Yeah, it's a parody. Uh, anyway, I I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm just disappointed that people are still doing shit like this. I think that's that's enough to say, Paris. So we'll catch you next time here on Terrible Book Club. Yeah, we'll May see. May Terrible be with you. We'll see you next time for 106, which is a, a patron's choice episode. Ooh. Mm. All right, Paris. See you later. Bye, Chris. Farewell, listeners.